you all, even just a little bit. Um, so I was raised in a really traditional Christian home in Canada, and my parents loved each other. They've been together 50 years. They still love each other. They love us as kids. I remember being young, and my parents, my dad told me to love me so often that I got annoyed. And I would tell him, God, stop. This is embarrassing. This should stop. You know? But we were told we should love our siblings. We should love our, our friends. I love my friends. I love my dog. I love my teachers at school. I love my colleagues in my classrooms. And you know, every Sunday when I went to church, uh, we were told to love our neighbors as ourselves. But guess what happened? Guess what happened? I grew up. And then I found out that it was all a lie. Mm. Because. Because when you're a head off, you have to get a job. And when you're in a job and you're looking with colleagues for half of your life every day, you're not supposed to love them. And if by any chance you do end up loving somebody that you're working with in your job, you should definitely not tell them that because that is deeply, deeply not professional. So for years, I was a closeted lover, working in jobs, working in companies hiding the fact that I was loving these people and just never telling them that, you know? And I would love them anyway. I just couldn't say it. I, I told there was this one day, but most years ago, you know, and I was on the phone with the CEO of a company that I was restructuring. But Lawrence, major multinational, about $600 million. And I was talking to the CEO through some of the challenges that we were having in implementing the changes that we wanted to make to the hit of those changes on some of their key executives. And we'd been on the phone for about 45 minutes and it was a really intense phone call. And so at the very end, just as I was about to hang up, I said, okay, I'll see you on Monday. I love you. And then I went, <laughs> and I was, I was reaching so fast for that red button, you know, turn it off. And I was like, oh, did I just tell my CEO client that I loved him? And I was reaching down to push the button and then I heard, oh, it was the whole horrible thing. I heard his voice through the tiny microphone reaching back to me. Yeah, cool. See you on the name. Love you too. And that was it. I hung up. And we never spoke of it again. But they got me thinking, you know. Why? Why is it that the highest quality relationship humans can have is intentionally exiled from the place where we spend the most amount of time with each other? What is it? Why is that? And so I started to debate deeply about level of work and the impact of what that might be. I started to read books by Amy Edkinson, who I met here at the House of Fort in November. She's absolutely brilliant. But she is the pioneer of psychological safety and organization, the highest form of which is love. And Simon Sinek, who's book, every book he's ever written, I've read, every YouTube video he's ever read, I've watched. And Simon Sinek is a guru of mine on empathy and leadership. But I don't see his book on the highest fault of ethics, which we've also bought. It seems interesting because the organization, the leadership, and in human relationships, love is a shortcut. It's a shortcut for belonging, shared values, trust, empathy, and yeah, psychological safety. If you want the highest fault of any of those things in your organizations, why are we not talking about life? So that occurred too. Now I talk about love on a spec. I spectate this from children to chocolate. So I can tell you now I love chocolate. I really do. Chocolate's amazing. I absolutely love it. And that's a true state. Yes, I love chocolate. I love Matt Damon too. I love Matt Damon adults. I've never met Matt Damon, but I imagine with competent friendship. But yeah, I love it. On the other end of that spectrum where I've got chocolate on one side, I've got my children on the other side. So I love my children. I really I've got five kids. I don't have any kids you've got I've got five kids. I love my kids. I would die for my kids. I would sacrifice anything to my kids. So somewhere between chocolate and children, there must be an expression of love that we can use in our place to work. Am I right? Somewhere between chocolate and children, there must be something not connected to romance, not connected to sex, and actually is a genuine expression of love in our places of work, where we spend the most amount of time with each other, never our job. Our organization is this isn't just a career it's half of your life every day every employee that works to work in your company is giving you half of their life every day i think anything that any that any human does with half of their life every day should be as meaningful as possible and the highest form of that being in human relationships is love so i look 
I look around for the book. I look around for the book. I love the teacher book. I love for it. I keep finding it. I found a dozen books on belonging. I found a dozen books on shared value because I found a dozen books on psychological safety, but not one. And I want to love. So, so I wrote it. It was published in December. It very quickly became the global Amazon number one test seller. And I'm here to try to introduce that concept to you because I really want you to see it. I want you to see that there's a progression relationship that every human has with every episode that they ever interact with. And it starts, it starts at the very basic level with inclusion. And I know inclusion is a big topic these days, but it is the quote support. It means you're well prepared. Inclusion is number one level. And that progression from inclusion to healing is heard. And if you feel heard because you're included, then maybe she'll feel understood. And if you feel understood because you're you're heard and you're included, then maybe if you're understood, then you'll feel valued in that community. Maybe if you feel valued and not over time, you'll also feel loved in that same community. And I'll be telling you this is profitable. This is profitable. Because you want the highest form of discretionary effort among your employees. You want them to sacrifice, you want them to work when no one's looking. You want them to give their best, you want them to develop themselves for the sake of you and your economic tribe. Try convincing them that they're loved. And that's a good start. I just want to say thank you so much for the award tonight, for your time and attention. You will never get any of this time back. I hope that it was meaningful for you, as it was for me. I love you.